and give ourselves to the world in order for that change to become real in our life. As we turn this day to the Word of God in Luke chapter 11, Hallelujah, Luke chapter 11, we'll be reading beginning from verse 5, the book of Luke chapter 11, reading beginning from verse 5. God's word speaking to us, he said, beginning from verse 5, and he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend? And shall go unto him, Jesus given a parable, how he began from verse 1, but in verse 5 he said, And shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me thee, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is, a friend of mine in his journey is come unto me, and I have nothing to set before him, and him from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. That's to say, my I and my children, all everyone were already in the world in bed. He said, I cannot rise and give thee. He said, I say unto you, though he would not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity. He will rise and give him as many as he needed. I'll be speaking today on what I title Persistently Ask. Persistently Ask. Persistently Ask. Jesus gave a parable how somebody went to his friend to ask for three loaves. And the friend would not do that, but because of his importunity, which to say because of his persistency, he will rise and give him. No one receives answer without asking. No one receives ans answers without asking. Asking will remain the only way to secure answers. Asking will remain the only way to secure answers. That's to say, nothing guarantees answers like asking. If you are not asking, you will not receive. If you are not ready to ask, you will not receive. <coughs> not to ask is not to be without answer. ask is to be without answers. Despite what you desire, no matter what it is, if you are not ready to ask, you are not ready to receive answers. Jesus was speaking in that same verse of the scripture in Luke chapter 11 and verse 10. He said to them, for everyone that asketh, receive it. You will only receive when you ask. And not just asking, but persistent in your asking. Anyone that asketh, receiveth. That is the secret of receiving. Anyone that asketh, receiveth. You don't receive what you have not asked. You don't receive what you have not asked. It will not just jump on your lap. It will not just fall from the sky if you refuse to ask. Matthew 7 and verse 7, he said, Ask and it shall be given you. What is given to you is on the premise of what you have asked. He says, Seek and you shall find. If you are not ready to seek, you cannot find. He said, Knock and it shall be opened unto you. What opens to you is what you have requested. That's why the only way to receive anything in this kingdom is by asking. There's no shortcut to answers. There's no shortcut to answer. 
But there are no shortcuts to answers. If you lack the ability to ask, there is no shortcut to it. That's why as a child of God, you must learn the art of asking. When we talk about asking, we're talking about praying. You must learn and master the art of asking in prayers. The secret to answers is in asking. The secret to answers is in asking. Is in asking whatever it is. We ask of God and he answer us. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. If you are not ready to call on God, you are not ready to receive the answers. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. There are a lot of things we don't know. It is in asking that God shows to us. That's why anyone that is self-sufficient can never know what is in the heart of God for him or her. No one is asking for fun of it. I've not seen any person who is asking just for the fun of it. The essence of asking or the essence of asking is answers. The essence of asking is answers. Our asking is answers oriented. It is not for fun. We are not just playing games when we are asking. We are in a serious business. When we are praying, we are in a serious business. It is not a fun fair. It is something that pertains to our life. That is why it is a paramount for a believer to know that and to master the art of asking. By being persistent. By being persistent. So, no matter how many times you have asked until you receive answers, don't stop asking. Don't stop asking. Don't stop asking. A lot of people stop asking because when they ask, they didn't see answers and so they stop asking. They stop asking. And they go about saying, oh, God does not answer prayers. God is a God that answers prayers. He doesn't stop prayers. And the only way to receive answers is by asking persistently. It's by asking persistently to see answers in any of your endeavors. You must be persistent in asking. Don't quit in asking. Don't give up when it is time to ask. Ask with all of your heart and the God that sees in secret will reward you the open. It takes being persistent in asking to see results. It takes being persistent in asking to see results. No matter what it is, if you are not persistent in your asking, you might not see that desire of yours come to pass. So don't give up. Don't lose hope. At the instance of asking, don't give up. Don't lose hope. At the instance of asking, be persistent. Be persistent. Be persistent. Somebody said, I've been asking for a long time now and I've not received. Be persistent. That's the reason for the word. Be persistent. Oh, some persons will say, there are people who ask and God gives to them. The simple truth is, persistency is what they mastered. That's why persistency is not a gift. It is a virtue. Persistency is not a gift. It is a virtue. You develop the act of asking.
asking persistently. You must develop the art. You must master it. You learn what it takes to be persistent in your prayer. You learn what it takes to be persistent in asking. You learn the art of being persistent. Jesus also said in Luke chapter 18, beginning from verse 1. Luke 18, beginning from verse 1. He said, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men always ought to pray and not to faint. It takes being matured at heart to be persistent in your prayer. Because if you are not persistent, if you don't develop or learn the act of being persistent, you will lose hope and faint. And he said to them, saying in verse 2, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, nor regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she said unto him, I beg me of my adversary. And the Bible said the man would not do anything. But the woman kept coming. I love this. For, and he would not for a while. But after what he said within himself. Do I fear not God nor regard man. And verse 5. Yet because this widow troubled me. She troubled me. That's the word to be used as persistent. She, kept, she keeps coming. She is persistent in what she wants. She is not giving up of her request. And the man said, because she troubled me, I will avenge her. Least by her continual coming, she weary me. I'll become tired. Because I don't want, you know, for her to keep coming. Let me quickly do this, what she asked. If the woman was not persistent in what she was asking, there would not have been result. There would not have been result. So she received what she asked because she was persistent. Asking is demanding what belongs to you in Christ on the basis of scriptures. Asking is demanding what belongs to you in Christ on the basis of scriptures. Second Peter 1 and verse 3, according as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He has given to us those things. But for us to receive them, we ask to see them manifest in our life. Somebody say, God is tired of hearing my prayers. That's why I'm no longer asking. I can tell you this day, God is not tired of hearing your prayers. God loves it when you pray. God is not tired of hearing your prayers. So don't be tired of asking. God is not tired of hearing when you ask. So don't be tired of asking. Don't be tired of asking. Don't be tired of asking. Persistent asking culminate into answers. Be persistent. Be persistent in your asking. Because when you are persistent, it culminate into answers. It culminate into results. That's why until Jesus Christ come, the key to answers is in persistency. Until Jesus Christ return, the key to answers or result is in persistency. Be persistent. Be persistent. Be persistent. Only those who are persistent in asking that see their request granted. Only those, only those who are persistent, they are the ones that will see what they request or what they ask of God granted to them. Only those who are persistent, as a child of God, be persistent. Master the art of persistency. Don't throw the tower. Don't give up at the first instant of your prayers. Be dogged when you are praying. 
Be dogged in asking because God hears your prayers. God hears and wants to answer you. But it will only take being persistent to see that answer come true. It will only take being persistent to see that answer come true. If you are not persistent in your approach to asking or praying, you become pessimistic. You become pessimistic. If you are not persistent in your asking, you will soon become pessimistic. You become pessimistic. Pessimistic people are never expecting possible outcome. They are never expecting possible outcome. That is why they cannot be persistent in what they do. Check it out. People who are pessimistic are never pers persistent in what they do. They give up easily. They give up because they don't have it. They've not developed it. They've not developed the, the art of being persistent and expecting something to happen good, something good to happen to them. And that is why there is no assumption. There is no assumption when it comes to asking. There is no assumption when it comes to asking. It is a conscious and a deliberate act coupled with expectation. You don't assume it. You don't assume that you are persistent. It is a conscious step. It's a deliberate act. You develop it. You learn the act of being persistent in asking. And you can't do that without the word of God. That's why you learn as you hear the word of God. He teaches you what it takes, the virtue, to stay on until the desired result comes to pass. What am I saying? Proverbs 23 and verse 10. He said, surely there is an end. Surely there is an end. Surely there is an end. Proverbs 23 and verse 18. And the expectation shall not be cut off. There is an end to what you are desiring. There is an end to what you seek for. There is an end to what you are asking. But until you see that there is an end, that's to say there is a solution to that problem, you might not see it. That's why that verse says there is an end and the expectation shall not be cut off. When you are persistent, that's when it will not be cut off. But when you are not persistent, it might be cut off. You might not see it. So learn what it takes to be persistent and see that desired result come to pass in your life. What makes asking rewarding is the tenacity to stay on until the desired answer are received. What makes asking rewarding and refreshing is the ability to be tenacious in what you are asking until the desired answer you receive it. When you are not tenacious, when you are not standing on what you desire, when you don't, when you lack the ability to be to be to stand firm in what you ask, you may not receive. The blessing that God has already laid out for you to receive every time you call upon him in prayers. The word of God speaking to us in Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35. Hebrews 10 and verse 35. The word of God speaking to us in that verse. Say, cast not away thy confidence. Many have cast their confidence. Many have given up. Many have let go. He said, cast not away thy confidence. 
which has, which has great recompense of reward. Don't cast away your confidence. I love the TPT version of that same verse. TPT version of Hebrews 10 and verse 35. It says, so don't lose your bold, courageous faith. Don't lose your bold, courageous faith. For you are destined for a great reward. You are destined for a great reward. But when you give it up, when you are not persistent, you might not see that great reward. The reward of persistent asking is overwhelming. So why would you want to give it up? Why would you want to throw it away? It's overwhelming. It's astounding. It's astounding. So learn. Learn what it takes to be persistent. Learn to be bold and be courageous. In spite of what you are going through, learn what it takes to persist in what you desire until you see the desired result come to pass. You know, no matter how long you've been praying or asking about a particular thing, receiving the answers will make up for those times. No matter how long you've been praying for a particular thing, no matter how long, but the moment you receive the answers, it makes up for those times. That's why you must understand what it takes to be persistent in your asking. The answer makes up for those times. As a matter of fact, you don't remember anymore how long it took for you to get the thing. What you are you know, focus on is the answer that you receive. That's to say, the answer swallows up those times of waiting. No one, Isaiah 40 and verse 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Why? The, the answer is overwhelming. So when you are persistent, it shows. When the child of God is persistent, it shows. Because he or she knows who has promised. He said, he that has promised is faithful. Faithful is he who has promised. I discovered from scripture, everyone that received answers to their prayers in scriptures, they had attitude to keep asking until the answer came. <coughs> Excuse me. Everyone that ever received answers from God in scriptures, one thing is common with them. They had attitude of staying on the thing they've asked of God. Until they received it, they never gave up. They stayed on. They kept that attitude until the answer came. You see, Elisha, Elijah told him, I'm about to leave. I'm leaving in 2 Kings chapter 2. Stay here and let me go over to the river Jordan. He said, no, I'm not going anywhere. I will follow you wherever you are going. I will get there with you. And Elijah allowed him to follow him. They got to the, the, the next level. He said, God is about to take me. Please stay here. I'm going. He said, no. And Elijah had to ask Elisha, what do you want? He said, I need a double portion of your anointing. And Elijah, Elijah told Elisha, what you ask is a hard thing. But nevertheless, if you see me being taken off, it becomes yours. It's a hard thing. The attitude of Elisha was, I won't go, let go until I receive what I'm looking for. I'm holding on to this truth. 
I'm holding on to what I desire. Until I get it, I won't let go. And he eventually got it. Is it a man called Blind Bartimaeus? Mark chapter 10, beginning from verse 46. He heard that Jesus was passing by while he was begging on the highway. And the moment he heard that Jesus was passing by, he began to cry. Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the people asked him to be quiet. And he cried yet the more. He called the more. He asked the more. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And Jesus called him. I said, call him. And the people that asked him were the people that said, come, he called thee. And he came. And he met Jesus. Jesus said, what do you want me to do? He said, that I may receive my sight. He received his sight because he had the attitude to keep asking until what he desired came to pass. <coughs> One of the women whose daughter was possessed of demons, the Syrophoenician woman, in Mark chapter 7, <coughs> beginning from verse 25 to 29, the woman came to Jesus, pleading Jesus to cast away the demon that was in the child, in her daughter. And Jesus said, Go! I have not come for you. I came for the for better people. I didn't come for people like you. You can't cast what belongs to children to dogs. And the woman said, yes, master, you're right. He said, but one thing, master, the crumbs that fall from the table, be the dog have access to them. Jesus said, you're right. And Jesus said to her in Mark 7 and verse 27, Mark chapter 7 and verse 27 says, But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dog under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way. The, dog, the devil is gone out of the daughter, asking persistently until she received it. Oh, the children of Israel with Jehoshaphat as a king. When they were confronted with challenges in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, beginning from verse 4, they went to God, talking to God, Lord, you said, time like this, when we ask for help, you will render help. And they told God all that God had said. And God brought answers to what they asked for. So many in the scriptures that we can find about men and women who act persistently until they receive what they desire of God. To ensure answers and asking, to ensure answers and asking persistently, what are the things? Number one, to secure answers and asking persistently. Number one, no God, no God is able and willing. You need to know that God is able and willing. Many believers don't know that God is able and willing. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. It says, God is able to do a sitting and abundantly above that which we ask and think according to the power which worketh in us. Luke chapter 5. A man that was leprous came to Jesus in Luke chapter 5, beginning from verse 12. He came to Jesus and said to him in verse 12, Master, if thou wills. He fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. And he put forth his hands and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And the man was clean. God is able and willing. That should stir your heart every time you go asking God. He's able and willing. Number two, to secure answers and asking persistently. Knowledge of what to ask. Knowledge of what to ask. Knowledge of what to ask. Many don't know what to ask. Many lack the ability to ask rightly because they lack knowledge. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Was here. Jeremiah 15 and verse 16. 
He said, the word was found and I did it there. And the word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. And I'm called by the name. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20. He said, my son, attend to my words. Incline to my saying. Let them not depart from their eyes. Keep them in the midst of the heart. For they are life to those who find it. The word of God is life to everyone who finds it. That's why you must have knowledge of what you are asking. Because everything you are looking for is built on God's word. Everything you desire in life is built on God's word. Everything man will ever need is in God's word. Knowing what God has said in his word concerning your need is key to receiving answers. It's key to receiving answers. Number three, scriptural backing to secure answer in asking persistently. You must have scriptural backing. That's to say, back up your request with scriptures. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 26. The book of Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 26. Isaiah put it in this way. Isaiah 43 Excuse me. And verse 26, he said, Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare that thou mayest be justified. Why will God do that thing that you are asking? Because you put him in remembrance. You are bringing forth his word to him. So that's why when you pray, it must be based on scriptures. Don't just pray because everybody's praying. Don't just ask because everybody's asking. Ask because you have scriptures backing what you are asking. Number four, through the Holy Spirit, to enjoy answer in asking permanently or persistently, it must be through the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. Well, we do not know what to ask as we ought. The Spirit makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So when the Holy Spirit makes intercession for you, it is according to God's word and it will not be ignored. There will be answers. The Holy Spirit is our best comforter. Is our partner. Is there to help us. And number five. Be specific in asking. Be specific. Don't be ambiguous in your asking. Ambiguity doesn't provide the answer. Many lack what it takes to be specific. They are asking all manners. When there is a specific need in their life. One need is tied to others. Be specific for Samuel. Chapter 1 and verse 11. Anna was specific about what she wanted. She knew when she had this one, every other one would be taken care of. She went to God in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 11. He said, in that verse, he said, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord, of hosts, if thou would indeed look on thy the affliction of thy handmaid. And remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a maid child. A maid child. That's what she asked. She known having somewhere, she will have every other thing. Is it the man, blind Bartimaeus? When Jesus asked him, What do you want? I want my sight. Be specific. Don't say, I need. This, I need this. Oh, what do you need now? What do you need? Hallelujah. Yeah. To ensure answers in asking persistently, ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Ask in the name of Jesus. Many don't know what it takes to ask in the name of Jesus. They ask for the sake of Jesus. We don't end our prayer 
as a tradition when we say in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is a seal to our prayers. It is the signature that heaven recognizes. That is why you must learn the art of asking in the name of Jesus in order to receive answers. If you've been asking for the name of Jesus, you will never get answers. It must be in the name of Jesus, which is the signature of heaven. Jesus was speaking in John 14 and verse 14. John chapter 14 and verse 14. He said in conclusion, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. In my name. It is isn't for my name or for my name's sake. In my name, I will do it. That's why you must learn what it takes to know what it takes to ask and be persistent in your asking. Somebody be on your feet. Talk to Jesus. Lord, help me to act persistently in my quest or in my desire for a change. Help me to ask persistently. Lord, help me to be specific. Help me to know that you are able and willing. Lord, as I acquire knowledge, Lord, help me in the name of Jesus. I will not miss it. Oh, somebody hearing the sound of my voice on the internet. You need to know that what it takes to ask persistently. And that's what we've shared. Lord, help me to ask rightly. Help me to know what it takes to ask to receive my answers in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. 